gentlemen, uh, warm regards from the sunny Belgrade after 10 days raining. Okay, how is it in London? Oh, the weather's okay in London as well. We had a heat wave during May. It was the hottest May or the driest May since records began. But now it's turned back to traditional London weather. Okay, we will discuss about the co-living then. Mr. Seifert, what does it mean the co-living? I would, I would describe co-living as a merger of modern student accommodation and a boutique hotel. It is a lifestyle choice, a lifestyle around sharing residential space with other like-minded individuals who are mostly young professionals. So they have their own rooms with bathrooms, but then they share other spaces, uh, such as cinema room, big living room, large kitchen, dining space, where they can throw their dinner parties, etc. And they have gym, workspace, networking space. Uh, there would be a concierge, super fast internet, cleaning service, laundry service, all other facilities that you need, you know, to have a busy life in the 21st century. Yeah, Josip, I agree. I like the analogy that you gave between, kind of in between student accommodation and a boutique hotel. It's somewhere kind of in the middle. Like you say, it's got the concierge service. It's got everything that young professionals need so that they can have a good, uh, interesting life and focus on living rather than the hassle of living in a normal kind of room share and in a normal house. Yeah, I agree. Where did it come from, Peter? Oh yeah, co-living. Well, it probably originated, um, you know, New York, London, Hong Kong. It probably emerged with the co-working culture that started in those kind of densely populated urban cities. And it's driven by, you know, it's driven that by the demand for affordable living. Uh, let's take London, for example. I know that the average price of property now in London, well, it's about £500,000 for the average house. Who knows what's going to happen over the next few months or the next year based on COVID, but we'll discuss that. Uh, so average savings in London, however, are about £5,000. So an average salaries, I think, are about 36000 So you can do the maths there. You can see that people cannot afford to buy. And it's that inability to be able to buy that drives the co-living concept. Um, it's called the savings purchaser power ratio. You know, the new, th these new kind of millennials now are described as generation rent. They're not gonna be able to afford to buy anymore uh, because they can't get a deposit together for the house. They, they just can't afford it. So they want to share efficient, modern, intelligent space, like Yossip said, with like-minded tenants. But originally, yeah, I think it came from all those big cities, probably Hong Kong originally, followed by London and New York with a co-working culture, and it expanded into co-living. Okay, and what is the expectation for the future uh, concerning the corona impact and the pertinent development of the co-living projects, how to say? Well, in, in these new circumstances surrounding coronavirus, this COVID pandemic, there are two lines of thinking. One line, people saying uh, this is co-living space and these are very tightly knit communities where people share their living space, but now they are required to stay two meters apart because of social distancing. So these people are saying this model is no longer viable because of the whole concept of co-living. Some other problems are that people lost their jobs so they can't pay rent. And also there were problems with filling the rooms because of the government restrictions, it was not possible to bring new tenants in. But I would say, Josip, that those are problems for, not just specific for co-living, but for any kind of rental. For any kind of house share, you'd agree with that, wouldn't you? Yeah, correct. That, that's the whole yeah. house share and buy-to-let industry. 
So, yes, so they're saying it's not viable, but the other school of thought, you know, once, there's lots of people that believe that once these general problems have been resolved, i.e. rent shortfalls and ability to move tenants, once you overcome those problems and you overcome the pandemic, you know, when the pandemic, when coronavirus starts to disappear, whether we have drugs, whether it's a vaccine, who knows, then the co-living model will actually thrive. It will actually be the best model because you've got small, self-sufficient rooms, which are kind of perfect for self-isolation if there is another pandemic. And you've got super fast internet, you've got, you know, like you said before, you'll say, like access to all the mod cons, which is perfect from working from home. And the model's gonna change. People are gonna be working from home more, it's gonna be the new normal. People are going to be working from home more and more and more. And I think that this pandem pandemic, the COVID-19, it's brought this style of agile working. It's accelerated it. It's brought it to the forefront of people's minds. And it will be, uh, you know, it's going to be an established way of working going forward. So lots of people are saying that co-living, therefore, will thrive. And also the most influential, or the most important point they're saying, is that it's not cyclical. You know, it doesn't depend on boom and bust, property prices rising. You know, it, it'll thrive because there, there's a demand for affordable living. Like I said before, big city, uh, can't afford to buy anything. So the people will be focusing on renting. So, and people would rather rent some co-living space which is modern, concierge, fast internet, got everything linked to co-working downstairs, maybe restaurant, gym, uh, cinema room, like Josip said. They'd rather live there than in a room in a standard house with, you know, standard tenants. Okay, M more or less, we are 25 days before Rebek. What is the expectation for the upcoming Rebek? Well, I think, you know, Rebek obviously is going to be online. So it's going to be one of the first online conferences that's going to happen in the whole of Europe. So it's two days, two days, two, two days, days the first yeah. two day online conference. One of them. Not, not only conference, that would be, that is the event with the exhibition part. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Exhibition, excellent opportunity for networking. You know, it's the new normal. We, you, we've still got the ability to exchange ideas, take advantage of this time that the corona, the pandemic, coronavirus has given us and using new technology, you know, how are we going to do all this? It's going to be so interesting. I know there are going to be breakout rooms that people can network. So it's a great, it's still a great opportunity to network and to discuss with other like-minded um, industry experts of what this new normal is going to be. And, you know, people talk to me about co-living, for example, in Central and Southeastern Europe. Is it viable over there? Well, I'd say, yeah, cities such as Bucharest, Sofia, Zagreb, Belgrade. You know, it could be a go-to model, like a mixed-use building, uh, where tenants can, you know, eat, live, work, socialize, exercise, do everything under the same roof. So it'll be something very interesting that we can speak on Rebic online. I think it's the... 30th of June and 1st of July, right? 1st of July, yes, yes, yes. No, we very much look forward to it. Okay, see you there then. Okay. See you there. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.